Hey guys, I'm here with a review for Friday the 13th, part 6, Jason Lives, and today happens to be Friday. Friday the uh, 24th though, not Friday the 13th, but um, yeah, this was actually pretty good. I hate to admit it. I went into this thinking it was going to be absolutely terrible, and it wasn't, so that should teach you about your expectations, I guess. Um, it is hard to manage them though, even though I tried to, but um, yeah, it was good. Um, so. Part six, this one is uh, interesting because it kind of returns, no, maybe not returns, it, it, it starts off in a new direction um, that is different for the series, but like very welcome, okay? Because basically this movie, the previous one was softcore porn. That is what it was. Um, it was a slasher second, a horror third, and a softcore porn first. This one, there is no porn elements at all. Um, there is not a single nude scene start to finish. Uh, this is the first film thus far that has no nudity in it whatsoever. And while I was, I admit I was starting to, uh, because there's not a lot of reason to watch these movies, I was kind of like, you know, that's one of the selling points. One of the things to look forward to is who's going to get naked today. Uh, but honestly, I, I didn't find myself missing it. Uh, it was nice. It was, because uh, the nudity usually is just a distraction. Um, so it was nice that this movie could actually focus on being a slasher and a horror. And I would say it was probably, I mean, it wasn't scary, but I would probably say this was the scariest one uh, this far. Um, just because Jason himself is such a titan in this. This is also the first movie where he is confirmed supernatural. In the past, it was, you know, implied or assumed, but this time it's just straight up confirmed. Uh, so what's happening, the plot of this one is Tommy, who, yes, Tommy has now showed up in this franchise for the third time in a row. So that's another thing this uh, film does correctly. It, it learns to carry on existing characters that are established throughout the films. That is another strength of this. So, um, yeah, this is uh, this was good for F-13 standards. Uh, compared to other movies, you know, it's below average in basically every single category. Um, but in F-13 standards, this is actually above average. So, um, but yeah, what's happening is Tommy is obviously still struggling with hallucinations and PTSD, and to try and solve that, he uh, goes to Jason's grave in the cemetery, digs him up, and he intends to light him on fire and just, you know, see with his own eyes, get rid of him. Because he doesn't know he's supernatural at that point. He thinks he's just like a guy, right? He's just a dude. So he wants to go burn up the body and just be done with it, and hopefully that will help uh, him escape his demons. But he accidentally revives, or resurrects is the right word, He ac Tommy accidentally resurrects Jason by sticking a metal pike in his body, in his heart, and then lightning strikes and it just it erases Jason from the grave. And this Jason is particularly uh, pissed off and evil, um, and he is just, and he's not invulnerable, but he is immortal. So this is a immortal, supernatural titan who spends the majority of the film uh, slow walking like a badass. Um, oh yeah, I've been playing the Friday the Thirteenth the game by the way, and uh, I love I love how there's so many like game stuff in these movies. This one he does like the throwing knife. He does underwater combat. And um, if you didn't know, if you played the Friday the Thirteenth game, um, all of the Jasons after Part Five are slow walkers, and the first five are are runners. So that was funny. Um, but I like that actually. I thought he was quite cool. His slow walk was intimidating. Uh, he's a scary guy. He's a confident guy too. And um, yeah, he's just pissed. And he, even though the town has been renamed to Forest Green or something like that, it's it's still Camp Crystal Lake, the blood the blood lake. And uh, one more thing I'll mention is um, so he oh yeah. And the last thing is he tries to convince the town sheriff that Jason lives, and obviously. He doesn't believe him, so he locks him up and tries to get rid of him. Um, and uh, the sheriff's daughter is uh, also a real, non-disposable character, and is also the first real love interest of uh, this series as well. Or, like, you could argue that Tommy's actually the love interest, and she's the protagonist. But, uh, tomato, tomato, really. So, yeah, this movie, what it does really well compared to other F-13 movies is that it, it carries over existing characters that are important and not disposable. It introduces new non-disposable characters that are not just cannon fodder. Some of them are, but not all of them. 
Um, Jason himself is particularly scary in this one because there's literally like maggots coming out of his like, I, I kind of, you don't see him unmasked in this, but I kind of wanted to see him unmasked just because it would be like the stuff of nightmares if his mask did come off in this. So, um, yeah, he's looking particularly scary and iconic. And, um, yeah, he's just a major threat. I also like it. The film ups the ante of threat level by introducing a cast of children. Now, I don't say they did it right in this because if you do it wrong, you just give them plot armor and you make them do stupid stuff like for example in the phantom menace when anakin's like let's let's try spinning that's a good trick that's when you ruin it with children is when you give them invincibility powers and plot armor and you make them do a bunch of good or a, a bunch of uh unrealistic stuff but that's not what they do here they're they're just a bunch of innocent children who are protected in believable ways because obviously we wouldn't want to see children die on the stream but i'm just saying the fact that they exist ups the ante and the threat level and makes us more concerned and it makes Jason scarier um, and they don't they don't handle the children in a bad way by giving them too many lines or making them do ridiculous stuff or making them too invincible so yeah um, I mean really there's a lot of good things about this I love that it's a uh, you know I've always preferred the unseen predator and I also prefer nighttime when it comes to Friday the 13th movies but this movie has a nice balance of both seen and unseen predator moments as well as daytime and nighttime moments so it does balance things correctly um okay but what the film gets wrong is <clears throat> uniquely wrong compared to other f13 movies is first of all the kills so the kills are a little bit censored maybe not by other movie standards but again by f13 standards these are the most censored kills yet i don't know why exactly because the movie's still rated r um but uh yeah they're just you know, I, I feel like there's maybe one or two visceral on-screen kills, uh, but other than that, you know, 80% of the kills in this are done off-screen, or they're implied, like you'll see blood splatter on a window, or the camera cuts away when someone's about to get their throat slashed or something like that. So the majority of the kills are done off-screen, and it feels a little bit like censorship. I don't hate it, but I do want to mention it. I do think this is the weakest kills of the series this far. They're not terrible. Um, they're still better than a lot of other horror movies, but like they are more censored. I think I do have to mention that. Um, and also, <clears throat> I think a major issue is uh, having Tommy uh, try to make convince the sheriff that Jason's alive. Okay, it just it's just too stupid to excuse. Uh, you, Tommy, just just tell him there's a guy trying to kill you. Tell him tell him there was someone attempted murder on you. Okay, it might be a small town where he doesn't take his job too seriously, but even he would have to take, you know, an attempted murder like that seriously. So, you, sh you shouldn't be telling ghost stories, just tell them that there's a guy on the loose, and then they'll go see him for themselves, okay? And, um, he, he really, Tommy really feels like, so, yeah, that's the thing. I like that Tommy is a existing character that is non-disposable and has carried on throughout uh, film to film. This is his third one now. But to be honest, he's not a particularly strong character, if we're being real. And um, I, it would it would have been nicer if he was making slightly more intelligent decisions because he's convinced that he's the only one that can um, put down Jason permanently. And he, I don't, I didn't really believe him when he said when when he says this. But apparently, in his mind, the way to defeat Jason is to return him to where he drowned. But like. He does that, and it doesn't do. It does not go as planned at all. It's like that does not work. So I don't know what he was talking about or where he got that idea from. But um, yeah, I think Tommy's not acting that smart. Um, but yeah, I still like his love interest, or you know, I sort of feel like Tommy's kind of the love interest, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I would like to see Megan going forward. I think Megan was a fun character. She was like a chaotic neutral or chaotic evil type, and uh, mix things up. But. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun, entertaining movie that is bite-sized, knows how long it needs to be, is expertly paced, uh, you know, there's no downtime really or any wasted scenes, so I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. I, this is now the second highest. Um, I'm hoping that one of these movies can go higher than 6, but we'll just, that might just be wishful thinking, so this is, this is movie 6, and I only have th these 8 plus the 2009 reboot, which I heard is really bad. So 
There's only three movies for me to watch immediately left, and uh, the other ones, I want to get them in disc. I've, uh, I watched some of the Halloween movies um, on bootleg services online. It just wasn't the same as having that like widescreen TV feel, so yeah, I do want to wait until I get the rest of these on disc before I watch them, so. 6 out of 10, I personally liked part 6, and 